Hey guys, so this week in lab we're going to actually be doing two different uh, two different labs. So we're going to be doing experiment number two and experiment number three. So experiment number three is an acid-base reaction as well. Um, like the experiment two was, was a buffer, so it was studying buffers. So now we're going to look at titration curves. Um, and titration curves are, are pretty simple. Um, they are basically a graph of pH versus the milliliters of, or versus the volume of titrant that you're adding. So, for example, if we start with a strong base, or a strong acid, sorry, um, and then we're going to add a, a base, the, you know, the pH is going to increase, but at a certain point, so for example, if we have hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide, which is actually what we're going to be doing, so we have HCl and NaOH, which are both we talked about. Um, essentially when all the H's from the HCl bond with all the OH's um, from the NaOH, you're just going to have water, which is at a pH of 7. So after that, um, the adding more base will just will just produce more, more base ions floating around. So um, we're going to be studying, you know, what what equivalence point is, and the equivalence point is when it reaches that that uh, that middle section. Uh, but let's talk about what a, exactly a titration is a little bit in slightly more detail. Um, so a titration is essentially trying to figure out how much acid or base is required to um, bring the solution to a a happy medium. Um, to where it's not too acidic, where it's not too basic. So we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be using hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide. We're also going to be using a weak base, ammonia. Um, and so essentially all that the lab is going to be is we're going to start off by um, filling a burette, which I have pictured here, um, with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and that's is that going to be a strong base or strong acid? So since it's got the OH, it's going to disassociate in water um, because it's it's a 0.2 molar solution. So a lot of that volume is actually going to be water, and so it's going to break up into sodium and the OH molar or uh, the the hydroxide. So essentially, you're you're going to fill up this whole thing with sodium hydroxide, and you're going to rinse out. Um, uh, pretty much everything you use, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna clean out with whatever solution you're gonna be using, um, and I'm gonna teach you how to take the pH measurements and how to calibrate the the uh, lab quest, um, and then you're essentially gonna do what is pictured here. You're gonna open the stopcock and pour a little bit of acid or base into an acid or base solution. So if if you have an acid in here, you're gonna pour base into it. Um, and we're going to have an indicator. So whenever we start um, reaching uh, or approaching the, the equivalence point, that solution is going to start to turn a specific color due to our um, indicator. So you're just going to have this, this little flask, and, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little magnetic bar in here, and this is all placed on a little hot plate. And the magnetic bar is just going to be spinning in order to mix the solution as you pour in um, your whatever your where your titrating or what your titrant. Um, so like I said, if you've got an acid in here, we're probably going to be pouring base into it until until you get a um, a very basic solution. And if you have a base down here, we're going to be adding acid until until you have an acidic solution. And so your titration curve is going to kind of look like this, depending on you, whether you have a strong or weak acid. So if we have a strong acid, you're going to start at a pretty low pH. And for a while, it's not going to get any stronger uh, or any more basic um, until you reach close to the equivalence point. Then it's going to shoot up, and this is typically when, you're, when your indicator will change color um, until it hits pH 7. And then it's going to keep going up because essentially at, at this point, what you have is pure water. Because, I mean, it's not obviously pure water, but it's, it's going to be the same acidity as water because all of the hydrogens from the acid and all of the hydroxides from the base will be used up. And then as you continue um, adding more base, so more hydroxide, 
your solution is going to jump up until you kind of saturate it with hydroxides um, and then the, the pH won't rise very quickly after that. So you're going to do one run with an acid adding base and you're going to do one run with a base adding acid and here we are actually going to have a weak base. So notice that the, the pH is only going to be about 14, 13, 12, it's going to be about 11 and a half. Well I mean this is obviously not what we're going to be using but um, this will be a very similar curve as to what we'll have and you'll see kind of a little quick drop in pH and then it's going to just keep decreasing until you reach the equivalence point and then after that as you keep adding more acid the pH is going to keep dropping um, and since we're going to have a strong acid we're going to probably hit a pretty low pH so that's essentially what we're going to do um, and now you're probably wondering how do I know exactly where this equivalence point is here? because you know here it's nice and pointed to but would it be here could it be here so in order to figure out exactly where our equivalence point is we're gonna look at derivatives and I don't know if you remember much from calculus um, if you were paying attention or sleeping in class so this is our titration curve right here the first derivative essentially shows the change so you'll notice here that we're kind of decreasing and keep decreasing and so you're, you're, you're decreasing faster and keep decreasing faster so your derivative is going to drop and drop and drop until about right here and then you actually start slowing down your decrease in pH and so then that derivative is going to go up and similarly the second derivative shows the change in the first derivative so here you're accelerating you're starting to accelerate downwards and so that's why it goes down and then you're gonna start stop accelerating downwards and start accelerating upwards and that's when this is gonna jump and then you'll start decelerating upwards and that's when this is gonna come back down so essentially what we're looking for is this point right here where it crosses the axis that is gonna be your equivalence point and so that is basically all that we are going to do in lab today this week um, so we're going to remember we're going to do both labs. We're going to do lab number two and, or experiment number two and experiment number three. So hope that helps.